That's the geometry session for today. And the first speaker is Hernan Ribeiro Jr. from Federal University of Ceará, and he's going to talk on four dimensional compact rich solitons. Hernan? First, I'd like to thank Professor De Tang Zhu for his invitation. It's a great surprise to be here. Uh, I'm very happy with this opportunity. Uh, so anyway, I will talk about four-dimensional compact rich solitons. Uh, but for understanding this kind, I will start recalling some definitions and some basic results about rich flow and compact rich solitons. In fact, in 1982, Richard Hamilton introduced the concept of the rich flow by the following evolution equation. In certain viewpoint, we may consider the rich curvature as Laplacian of the metric plus lower order terms. In certain viewpoint, we can see this equation as heat equation. Okay? The rich flow can be used to deform the metric uh, into a distinguish by its curvature. And the rich flow can to develop singularity at finite time. It's a special kind of the stock. The behavior of the flow serves to tell us much about the topology of underlying manifold. So let me talk about some special solutions. For instance, ice manifolds. Uh, a simple example of the rich flow is that starts with a round sphere uh, with standard metrics. In this case, this involved by shrink homotactically to a point in finite time. More exactly, if you consider the rich curvature of G0, it goes to lambda G, G0 for some constant lambda. These metrics are known as the metrics. We can prove that the evolution by metrics given by GT equals to 1 minus 2 lambda T G0. Okay? And for a round sphere, we conclude this evolution is given by GT equals 1 minus 2 and minus 1 T G0. And this sphere collapses to a point at time T equals 1 over 2 and minus 1. I have a collapse point in this field. Or there is, if you consider the rich curve to equal, equals to minus n minus 1 to naught, the evolution equation is given by this expression. And there's an item end here. And the manifold is spent more technically for our time. OK? This is more clear in two dimensional case. In two dimensions, we can write the Gauss curve as rich equals to Gauss curve two times the metric. In this case, regions and the compact manifold has negative Gauss curve to tend to expand. And the regions where the Gauss curve to is positive tend to shrink. In fact, you have the following picture. Here are regions where the Gauss curve to is negative and tend to, to expand. And here I have regions where the Gauss curve to is positive and tend to shrink for a point, OK? In fact, this many the gas, I have, uh, I, the rich flow tend to make two spheres around. That's not that the case. Yeah? There's an excellent theory which shows that the rich flow on, and closed surface tend to make the gas curvature constant, OK? Uh, but there is a more general notion of self-similar solutions than uniformly shrink and expand solutions. These are the rich solitons. Uh, to understand such solutions, we need to consider the modifying the, the rich flow by a family of diffeomorphism. Essentially, we have for each t between z not and bigger t, we consider the self-similar solutions given by these expressions. Here, I have a family of diffeomorphism modifying the rich flow. In the Einstein case, the diffeomorphism is equal to identity. Okay. Uh, as a consequence of these expressions, we deduce the rich, tense, uh, rich soliton equations. Okay? In fact, a rich soliton is a Riemannian manifold with together a complete vector field. The Riemannian manifold with together a complete vector field and a constant lambda such that the rich curvature is equal to one half, the lead derivative equals to lambda g. Okay? And in special, a uh, rich salt whose the associated vector field can be right in terms of the gradient of some smooth function f, you can 
write this term as Hessian F equals to lambda G. And these rich sultans will be called gradient rich sultan. Okay? Moreover, it will be called steady spender shrink if lambda is negative, zero, I'm sorry, negative or positive respectively. Uh, let me show two examples. In fact, Professor Katten Blatt showed these examples yesterday. Sweeten black hole, Seeger Solton, and Gaussian Solton. Uh, the Seeger Solton, the first example, can be written a clean space with mat g equals g x square dy square over 1 plus x square y square. And you can take the vector field uh, minus 2x dx. plus y to y, and lambda to be 0. It's the first example of stead non-compact rich sultans found by Richard Hamilton. OK? This is a gradient vector field, OK? This is a gradient vector field. Uh, in fact, the sigma solton has positive gas curvature, and the sigma solton's opes at infinite Likert cylinder. And the Gaussian soltons is another example with a standard metric, but remember the, the Euclidean space with standard metric has fl flat rich curvature. Okay. Then, if you take, for instance, x identically zero and lambda to be zero, I have a trivial example. But the Gaussian, the Gaussian soliton is a non-trivial example because this potential function is not constant. Okay? Then the family of the field is not trivial. But I have a problem here, because my, my two examples are non-compact. My talk is about compact case. <laughs> but in the sense, when the underlying manifold is a, comp is a complex manifold, we have a corresponding notion of kelly rich solitons. In fact, a kelly rich solitons is a complete kelly metric such that the following equation holds for a sum holomorphic vector field and a sum constant lambda. Okay? In this sense, the first example of compact rich solitons was constructed by Koizo and independently for Aydong Chao in 90 years. And the example is constructed in CP2, connect sum minus CP2. In fact, I put in here Koizo Chao example. CP2. Sorry. Okay. It's the first example. But that is another. But it's important to me in this moment, just example. Okay. Let me tell you more about compact rich solitons. Uh, about the geometry of compact rich solitons. Uh, we call attention for the following result. Grisha Perlman proved that every compact rich solitons must be gradient tape. In fact, Perlman proved that if I have a compact rich solitons, M and G act lambda compact case, such that the following equations hold, then there is another vector field, gradient tape, such that the same manifold, the same metric, I can change the vector field, the same constant, such that the following equation holds. Okay? And Hampton proved that every stead or spent compact rich solitum gradient tape is trivial. Then, combining these two results, we have the following characterization. We have compact rich soliton. Then, first, is gradient tape. Second, should it be shrink. Okay? In fact, 
Hamilton's proof taking into account the following expression. The Laplacian of the scalar qubit is equal to nabla, scalar qubit, nabla f minus 2, the normal of the rich qubit plus 2 lambda scalar qubit. And by strong mass mu principle, conclude the scalar qubit must be positive tape. Let us have another formation. Okay? So, in fact, the relationship between this initial vector field and the gradient vector field obtained by Perrin is not clear in this moment. It's another vector field. Yeah. In fact, I have this, this question. <laughs> but if you start a vector field on a compact manifold, the Hodder decomposition theorem shows that we can decompose this, the associated one form to this vector field as difference of zero form plus a co difference of two form plus a one form such that the one form is harmonic. Okay? Then, if you apply here sharp, I have flat, sharp, I back for x, and here I have d, d alpha, sharp plus sigma beta plus gamma sharp. And this term is the gradient alpha plus a term here, sigma beta plus gamma sharp. And this term is a, a vector field with free divergence. Okay? Then, if you compare this decomposition with Perman theorem, we conclude the vector field X is equal to nabla F is up to constant equals to this decomposition, the whole decomposition theorem, plus sigma beta plus gamma sharp, or is vector field a killing vector field. Okay? Then this relationship is clear now. Okay? In fact, Akin Barras and myself proved in 2011 that permanent potential is up to constant equals Hodderham potential in this decomposition. Telling more about compact rich solitons, every two dimensional compact solitons must be trivial. It was proved by Hamilton in 1988. And in three dimensional case, I've proved that every three dimensional compact rich solitons is trivial. Taking into account, co is a child example. I conclude that is non-trivial example in dimension four. Then, in dimensions bigger than or equal to four, that are compact non and gradient shrink salt. Okay? Then I have another information in my list here. In compact case, the dimension must be bigger or equal to four. Okay? To complete this part, I put the result. Garcia Hill and Fernandes Law prove that every compact salt has finite first fundamental group. Okay? Then I have the following list. A compact salt must be gradient, positive scalar qubit, shrink tape, dimension bigger than or equal to four, infinite first fundamental group. Okay? I use these information to show my next results. Now, I consider just four dimensional case. Okay? I have an example, I have motivation. Uh, in four dimensional case, we remember the Riemann decomposition of the curvature tensor is given by the following expression. Here I have Kukarno meso product. And here I have the definition of the value tensor. Okay? And for dimensions less than or equals to three, the value tensor range. And you remember the locally conformally flat manifolds for dimensions bigger than or equal to four is, has, I'm sorry, Bio tensor identically zero. Okay? Uh, a weaker condition in dimension four, in special case in dimension four, we have that by using the hot star operator, we can split the value tensor as double plus a double one minus, and self dual, a self dual part of the value tensor, just in four dimensional case. And I have a weak condition in relation locally conformally flat, is that a metric is half conformally flat. If it's self dual or self dual part vanishes okay, locally, and now I have half conformally flat. And a double plus part of the value tensor, I will go for the W minus change of the orientation, okay? And W plus harmonic if the formal divergence is identically zero. An important information here is that 
If m4 is a four-dimensional Einstein manifold, then m4 has harmonic tensor double plus. Then it's very interesting to know when the converse holds. We look in here, the rich solitude has an generalization of the Einstein metric. If this term is zero, I have Einstein metric. Okay? So, uh, but before this, I, I want to show an uh, important inequality in dimension four. Uh, we recall the following Risenbrook form, which involved the asymptote of a four-dimensional manifold. And the sh by Schein gauss bonnet form, the only characteristic of a compact four-dimensional manifold is given by this expression. Here I have the rich translates. The rich translates is the tensor rit minus r over ng. Okay? In combining these two expressions, Hitch and independently top prove the following inequality. Give a four-dimensional compact Einstein manifold, then the only characteristic is bigger than or equals to three times the signature over two. Okay? So, in fact, this result gives a one topological objection to existence of Einstein on four-dimensional compact manifolds. Okay? But if you're looking for cohesion on our example, the only characteristic is equal to four, and the signature is equal to zero. Then the Hitch top inequality holds. In fact, all known examples of rich solid in dimension four satisfies the Hitch top inequality. In fact, in 2006, Haidong Chow proposed the following problem prove that every four dimensional complex solid satisfies the Hitch top inequality. In Kelly's case, this result is knowing. Uh, but However, a complete proof is not present yet. Uh, but a partial proof was showed by Lima in 2006, where he proved that if we have a four-dimensional compacted solid, such that the integral of the scalar curvature square is between this interval, 0 and 24 lambda square volume m, then the heat top inequality holds. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, in the same years, Gursky and independently Haris Sechadri proved that every four dimensional compact oriented manifold with positive scalar curvature satisfies the following inequality, which involves the oily characteristics. Remember, here the assumption is positive scalar curvature, and my soliton has positive scalar curvature. And in particular, the, equal, the equality holds if you only if M is a match to that sphere. But if M4 is a match to that sphere, then M4 has constant scalar curvature. Compact soliton with constant scalar curvature must be trivial. Okay? So by using this, I prove, with together Brazil and cost, that if I have a four-dimensional compact soliton, such that the following integral, the following estimate holds, the M4 is a metric standard sphere. In fact, I have uh, a number here, 24 lambda square volume M minus 8 pi square. Then I have this number is less than this number. And if this integral is this integral, then the rich solution is trivial. Then a non trivial rich solution, such that the heat top inequality equations hold, this integral must be in this interval. Okay. So next, back for problem comment before. Every four-dimensional Einstein manifold has harmonic tensor double plus. Then we want to know when the converse holds in these directions. In 2009, Zhang proved that every locally conformal flat compact soliton are trivial. Next. Garcia Lopes and Fernando Hills prove that every compact rich solitons with harmonic tensor are trivial. The vial tensor, for instance, in fact. And in dimension four, Shen Wang proved that four dimensional half conformally flat compact soliton are isometric to S4 or CP2. In fact, they prove that four dimensional half conformally flat compact solitons are trivial. 
but are trivial implies Einstein. And by Hitchin theorems, Einstein manifolds in dimensions four with positive scalar curvature, half conformally flat, implies isometry as four CP2. Okay? Later, Brazil, Costa, and myself proved that every four dimensional compact salt with harmonical tensor double plus and double plus normal. And, and if W plus has constant norm, the M4 is a metric standard sphere or CP2. Okay. Uh, and recently, Professor Chow taking account of this following tensor, back fat tensor. In fact, back, te back flat te back tensor was introduced in 1920s to study conformal relativity. Look at that. If the metric is, half, uh, is locally conformally flat or Einstein, then the metric is back flat. In fact, back flat metrics are critical points of the functionals given by uh, this functional, WJ equals the integral of M, the value tensor square dVd. Back flat metrics are critical points of this functional in dimension four, okay? Dimensions four. In fact, and by using this this tensor, I don't shall prove the following. With King Shen, prove the following result: for dimensional back fat compact resultants are isometric as four CP two. In fact, um, uh, half conformally flat implies back flat. In the sense, this result improves the Shen Wang result. Okay, this is the last result. Thank you.